Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through my interim portfolio as a final year MRC student. And I'm also gonna be walking you through some of my favorite tips and hacks in InDesign, which I love to use to make an efficient and quick and easy portfolio. So this interim hand in is a non-marked submission. And I think the most important thing here is preparation. So if you've been following along on Instagram and my Archie Diaries YouTube series, then you'll see that every week I've been creating a presentation pack to not only present to my tutors, but to actually collect and collate a series of pages that I can then basically import as a portfolio and put together. So it's come in really, really handy. And I think that's my number one advice for architecture students in any year is to make sure you're giving yourself that kind of setup to stay ahead. And as you can see on the right here, I've got around 50 pages, which might seem like a lot, but I'm the type of person to kind of spread everything out and to have one core cool idea per page. So it really depends on the kind of look you're going for, the themes of your project and so on and so forth. Before I actually walk you through my portfolio, I just want to talk about the InDesign workspace. So I use the advanced workspace, which you can see here. There's all kinds of different modes that you can set up, but it's very simple and I have a specific set of windows open as well. So I have the layers tab, which comes in really handy. I don't really go all ham with my layers. It's kind of very simple, just content and text. And that helps when I'm kind of like rearranging things because I can differentiate between the content, which is usually an image imported in from Photoshop or Illustrator and any text, which is usually like page titles, descriptions, annotations. So if I go into my parent page here, you can see that I've got a basically a title um, block that I've created in Photoshop and this goes hand in hand with the kind of style that I'm going for. And I've got this on both my pages. And then if I go to the corners over here, I've got a page number. So you can add this really simply by going to type, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. And you can just add that as a text box. It's super easy to do. So I've got those in both these corners. And then if we go back to my portfolio here, um, I've also got other windows such as the align window. I like to use the distribute objects one quite often. If you haven't noticed, I do also have a grid, which I'll be talking about in a second. I've got the stroke panel, CC libraries, and then I've got paragraph styles, which again, also comes in really handy. So if you're including a contents page in your portfolio, you can do this really simply and basically automatically if you've got a paragraph style for your titles for each page. So if I show you one example here, I've got char rugs and carpets, and this is a title paragraph style. So you can add a paragraph style here. Um, it's really simple to do. You kind of just have to go up to layout, table of contents, and then you select the paragraph style to include. So you can see I've already added the title one. And then I've also added base to add the page number at the end. And it generates this contents sort of text block for you. So you kind of have to look for these really simple hacks to get you through and create your portfolio with ease. And then obviously you can update that as your titles update throughout the portfolio too. So if I change this, um, all I have to do is click on here, go back to layout and just click update table of contents. So that's my workspace. And in terms of my portfolio, I've set up a very simple baseline grid. So I've done this using the margins and columns features. This is a A2 piece of paper. So there's two portrait A2 pages um, and I've worked in spreads and that's the way I just like to work. If you work in landscape, that's totally fine. Um, the spacing of these grids is totally up to you. It took me a while to kind of like tweak. And for me, when I'm designing pages and putting things on a page, I like to take one thing off the page before I finalize it. Just because I feel like sometimes we can get carried away with adding too many things on the page and then it can look quite congested. So it's really about just being very specific and sharp with what you want this page to say. Cover page, which is New Paradisa, and this is the title of my projects. I've also got the most latest renders that I've been working on. I've also included a page from my sketchbook at the front into my portfolio, and then I've got the contents page. 
I've kind of tried to add this sort of fantastical storytelling elements throughout the portfolio and that's why I've created these borders and these are actually from collages that I've previously done and I photoshopped them and adjusted them so that they're basically frames for a piece of text and you'll see similar ones later on as well. Pages are very simple but like I said because they're in spreads the whole point is that um, it works in a way that each page is linked to each other and so you're kind of viewing it as a whole spread rather than a page by itself and one thing and one piece of advice that I always like to give to students is that the page that you're working on should relate to the page before it and the page that comes after it and that way you kind of have a really strong narrative throughout the project too. So I started off by looking at the uh, Mughal Empire, what their ideas were about paradise, how they used to live and how they kind of treated the environment around them. And then I discovered paradise gardens and this was a really cool concept and so I started looking at different representations of paradise gardens and found that they were very prominent in Persian carpets especially and carpets are also a great kind of metaphor for bringing the outside in. And so I think um, what I wanted to do with this project is really start by some strong imagery of those carpets. I then also included some of the collages I started to do. And I think this is kind of like a general way that I usually work at the beginning of the year is by doing a bunch of collages, figuring out what I want to create, what kinds of architectural styles there are and things that I'm researching into. Um, and so one of those things was the Charbag, which is the Paradise Garden. And I started looking at like different plans that I could find online and putting like my own plan together, if that makes sense. So this is kind of a page that looks at that. And then I also have a series of collages that I created that represent different types of gardens. So this one is the Garden of the Soul, this one's the Garden of the Heart and so on and so forth. And these are very strong kind of elements within my portfolio that come quite early on. And they actually set the tone for not only the style, but the whole premise and narrative of the project going forward. So I think that's a really good way to kind of make sure that you're going into the portfolio with a bang and it's not kind of like taking pages and pages of research to lead up to something that you've designed yourself. So even though this is only a collage and it's not actually an architectural design, it's still something that is kind of representative of the project going forward. And then I started to kind of dive deeper into Persian carpets, different types of carpets, patterns itself, and uh, what those patterns meant and symbolized. And so these pages are ones that I've actually already done. And all I had to do was kind of like re-put them on a page, add the title, add a bit of text, which again, I already did previously in the last few weeks. And the only pages that I kind of redid were these ones where I just wanted a cleaner look because the ones I did previously were very kind of like heavy and they hadn't had a like figured out style yet. So for these pages, I basically re-rendered this model as a render rather than an illustration, added a carpet texture onto here as well. So then that leads into this exploration and this study of what those patterns mean, taking like another iteration of that pattern and then identifying um, different motifs and hybrid sort of components that I ended up creating. And so then we come to a stage where section one is kind of finished and I haven't clearly kind of denoted the different sections within my portfolio but it is there and I think that's also a really good way to see how the portfolio progresses throughout as well because if you've got sections like research at the beginning which is naturally done and then you've kind of got I guess experimentation and then by this stage like around Christmas time you'll be kind of starting your design development so those are the general three categories or three sections that I like to work within and and right now the portfolio is at a stage where it's kind of setting up the narrative of the project which again is really really key to how the um, designs turn out so over here I've kind of got a bit of text that explains what the project project is and what the project looks to do um, on the right hand side here I've got a sort of propaganda style poster which explains this concept of new paradisa which is new paradise it's a really good sort of like marker for this is where the research has concluded and now the following pages are going to be experimenting with 
actual sort of architectural designs and objects. I did some research into circuit boards and then did a couple of collages with that as well. I started looking into Persian cartoons, which are these sort of, I guess, drawings which highlight the patterns within a Persian carpet and they were very, very sort of detailed and intricate. And so I took one of my previous collages and did a similar exercise as well with those. And then that got me looking into weaves and knots and the different types of weaves. So it's going very, very in depth and the research phase is still there, but it's also kind of like at the same time doing my own thing. So then you'll see that this page here then leads on into these two pages, which are actually my own versions. So these are photoshopped versions of the weaves that we saw previously. And I basically created my own set of patterns. This is at a stage where I'm actually kind of designing my own weave. Um, and I used a program called Modo to model this kind of like thread and then replicate that and actually use the patterns from before to create a diamond diode pattern. Um, I also rendered that to see the kind of like render qualities, the materials, and that set me up for the next stage. So this is all again, research. And this is another marker. I've got that kind of like um, border on this page as well. So from this stage on the portfolio then actually only includes stuff that I've designed. So the research kind of takes the back seat, which is great. And the designed elements come in. And so again, having these markers within your portfolio can also help you frame, like, I guess the project as a whole, and it will help you to also know when to stop researching, if that makes sense. Because I think we can get carried away in doing loads of research and having a lot of images and things that aren't really our own. And the whole point of a portfolio is to kind of show what your interpretations are of the research that you've done. So make sure to keep that in mind while you're designing as well. These are two initial versions of the uh, components that I designed. So these were the tests that I had done just before we um, broke up for Christmas. And then what I've been working on over the break are these final components. So if I zoom in a little here, you can see that um, these are kind of like hybrid render drawings that I've done. I've added text, explained what they are and how they relate to the narrative, laid them out in a very simple manner just because I didn't want to overcomplicate them and really re let the render shine as well. So that's pretty much it. It's a very simple portfolio if you think about it. It just takes a lot of time to, you know, get that quality to um, write everything out as well. But I think if you take it in chunks and if you plan out your portfolio carefully to like the page then you'll find that it's really simple to put everything together because all the work is there it's just about putting it on a page so obviously you will have to reorganize some things adjust some things tweak things another thing that helps me is thumbnailing so um, i think around like around this page around here these couple of pages i was kind of getting stuck and i didn't really know whether i wanted um to include like all the previous sort of patterns and research and things on separate pages or whether I wanted to condense them all into one page and I started thumbnailing and how I wanted the narrative and the project and the portfolio to flow so that's also a really good tip so those are all the tips I have for putting together a portfolio like this and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe see you guys next time